Welcome to SJ Weekly, guys. Uh, I'm sick again. <laughs> this is the third time since June I've gotten sick. Uh, I have a feeling that maybe my roommate is a disease vector into the house because he's sick every week. Uh, today, I'm having a cough drop. Listen to this. Ooh. Fuck yeah. It's a Ricola. But let's get into it. Uh, a teacher gave my son a detention for saying he'd vote UKIP. Okay. <laughs> Nick Ferrari was shocked when this caller said his teenage son was given a detention at school after telling a teacher he'd vote for UKIP. Is there a video here? Let's let's play the video. Paul is in Loughton. Paul, what happened to your son? He got into trouble. Is that right? Good yeah, there was a few of them. It was during the last general election, and I was having a debate in his class about who you'd vote for. And one boy said he'd vote for UKIP, and the teacher said that all, all UKIP voters are racist. So my boy uh, joined uh. in and said, well, I vote for UKIP, and I'm not racist. Uh, they're about controlling it, whatever. Yeah. And he was given detention, the three boys that said it. And when he came home and told me, I didn't believe him. I said, let me ring the school. And the head of the year said, when I talked about it to the teacher, came back and he couldn't apologise enough. He said it's, you know, she, she got angry because they said... They'd vote for you, kid. A teacher I mean, gave he, you... How old is your boy? He was 15 at the time. Oh, Holy my God. Shit. So they're, they're on the verge of becoming young men. They're a couple of years off from voting. They're having a conversation about the general election. One boy says, I'd vote you, kid. Your son... Your teacher goes nuts and says they're racist. Your son... Joins, and they get detentions. They got detentions. They, they didn't have <laughs> to have the detention. The, the head of the year really apologised, said the teacher, if she's going to have ah. a debate, she's got to be out to... Um, Take other people's So when you challenged the school, the school took the tensions away and apologised. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They completely. He really apologised ahead I of bet. the year. You, the can't, you can't have a conversation about a general election then when somebody wants to vote for one of the main parties. Well, one of the parties is it right? You've got a detention. <laughs> That's absurd. Well, well I, I couldn't believe it at the time. I thought there's no way he's got a detention for that. But <laughs> he, I, I said I'll ring the school and find out. And, go and on then, Dad. Ring him. Go on, Dad. Ring him. Ring him. It's true, said, Dad. Said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice story, uh, Paul. But how did the teacher? Is she did you say it was a she? The teacher. It was a she. The teacher. Yeah, yeah. It was his uh, form teacher. Yeah. She, and I think she had to apologise to the boys. And right. Good. Well, I'm glad the school took the appropriate action. I'm not saying, by the way, you should all vote you. Can say whatever you like, as long as it's not a banned organisation. Paul, thank you. Fascinating story. We. Holy shit. Okay. Well, there we go. Wow. I can't fucking. I guess. I mean, it's the UK. I guess I can believe that. Let's see what the article says. One boy said he'd vote for UKIP, and the teacher said that all UKIP voters are racist. Imagine actually thinking that. Imagine actually believing that wanting immigration control or wanting to leave the EU is racist. What kind of mental pretzel do you have to bend yourself into to get into that type of headspace? It follows reports that a teenager quit her college course because her tutor warned her she was too right-wing over her support for Tommy Robinson. Alyssa Cook Gray, 17, claims a teacher told her, get out, we don't want people with your views during a political debate. Well, guess what? I have that article right here. Um, teacher quits college course on first day, or sorry, teenager quits college course on first day after being given final warning for declaring her support for Tommy Robinson. So not only are you too right wing for this grade school here, you're too right-wing for a college course, apparently, if you just believe in, you know, center-right positions that aren't actually all that unreasonable. Teenager Alyssa Cook Gray sh says she was given a final warning by her college because she told classmates her favorite person was Tommy Robinson. The 17-year-old was attending the first day of her art and employability course at Total People when a political debate erupted among students. Alyssa says her classmates were openly expressing their support for Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn when she told them she identified more with right-wing ideologies. When asked who she admired, Alyssa responded she liked right-wing activist Tommy Robinson, who is best known for forming the English Defence League and is a vocal opponent of Islam and its followers. Um, I don't know if this article is presenting this as if it's a critique of him, because that's actually not... <laughs> Not necessarily a bad thing, if you know anything about Islam. She, she now feels terrified to return to her course, and has taken the decision it wasn't for her, quitting after over an hour of lessons. Was she kicked out, though? 
Oh no, she was given. She was kicked out. Alyssa said, "I was given a final warning for being too right wing. It was the first day we were all having a conversation when Jeremy Corbyn came up. I asked people not to get into it because it was filled with a room of lefties. I said my opinion, and the teacher said, "Get out. We don't want people with your views." I was given a final warning for being too right wing. The class then started asking everyone who their favorite person was, and I said, "Tommy Robinson." I like what he's doing for our country, and I follow all of his stories. I think he's a savior. Stoke on Trent Live approached Total People for comment, but the organization is yet to respond to our requests. However, a spokesperson for Total People told The Mirror Online, We are an inclusive organization. We are values-led, and we ask that all learners are collaborative, respect each other's views, and work towards common goals. We have successfully worked with learners over a 20-year period from many different backgrounds, religions, and diverse cultures but apparently not diverse political opinions. And it would also seem like people are becoming too right-wing for money because there's this tweet from uh, the alternate social media platform, Gab. They say, next it will be banks cutting us off and others. You think we're joking. We predicted payment processors would. We predicted hosting providers would. We proved DNS providers do. This whole thing started with um, something that I mentioned in my anti-social media video. Uh, with Cloudflare kicking off the Daily Stormer arbitrarily for no reason. They just did it. And then that, that started the cascade, which culminated recently in Alex Jones being completely blown off the internet in its, in its entirety. Well, what they're referring to specifically is this. Stripe freezes Gab's account for not safe for work content, shining a light on a problematic policy. Social network Gab, a haven for toxic alt-right personalities banned from more mainstream platforms, has had its Stripe account frozen due to adult content on the platform. But even if you cheer Gab's problem, Stripe is no hero. Well, here's the problem. Doesn't Stripe provide uh, credit card processing uh, services for Patreon? And there's a lot of porn on Patreon. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't Stripe provide um, credit card processing services for many places that have not safe for work content. Why are they singling out Gab? I don't think the problem here is not safe for work content. I think the problem here is free speech content because Gab doesn't censor, period. Stripe, according to Gab, told the social network that it must modify its terms of service to indicate that adult or illegal content cannot be streamed through Gab TV or otherwise distributed through the Gab service and to put in place reasonable controls to ensure that no adult or illegal content is being streamed through Gab TV or otherwise available on the Gab service. Gab claims that the service doesn't allow illegal content on its site and that all adult content is marked not safe for work. We've had this content in a not safe for work setting for two years now with no issues from them until now, Gab wrote in a tweet on Wednesday. It's no surprise to anyone that when the big social media platforms started banning political speech that they didn't like, and then those people that were banned decided to take their ball and go home and basically build their own sites, that the SJWs were going to come after them financially. And this part's actually quite interesting. The spokesperson added, It's interesting how we've never had any issues with either of these payment processors over two years now, but all of a sudden when Gab.com is the only platform on the internet to host Alex Jones and Infowars, we become the target. Yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? I wonder if Gab could get in contact with Pornhub or some other kind of large porn site and figure out how they handle their money, like what, what payment processor they use. It might be, it, it, it just might be the case that um, alternative social media networks are going to start have to using porn services to stay alive because Silicon Valley absolutely does not want them to thrive. And speaking of SJW brainlets, I just had to take a look at this article <laughs> from Kotaku. How the NPC meme, which paints people as agency-free and incapable of critical thought, tries to dehumanize SJWs. <laughs> and that's a, this is an excellent picture they've decided to use. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, um, the NPC meme basically means that, um, you know how you have that voice in your head that tells you what to do when you're not speaking? Like you kind of think to yourself in words in some language. You have an imagination. You have the ability to, like, reasonably predict things before you do them. Um, the NPC meme implies that some people out there don't have that. And they're just, like, walking machines with no thought behind them. And Aiden Paladin actually did a pretty good video on this. 
Um, well, <laughs> Kotaku. N n n well, now that it's become a meme, Kotaku is uh, taking a taking offense to it because apparently SJWs are considered NPCs now. <laughs> okay, let's read this. From time to time, and especially if you're a fan of science fiction, you may have had the thought that nobody around you is actually real. That sentiment has taken root in anti-progressive parts of the internet as a dehumanizing meme, and it borrows some familiar gaming terminology. Of course it does. It's all, it's all gamers. We did it all. About a month ago, a meme along those lines took root on 4chan and among anti-progressive online communities. It's called the NPC meme, and it goes like this. Out there in the world, there are literal NPCs, the term for non-playable characters in video games, who have no internality whatsoever. There are some giveaways, of course. They spit out canned lines, like good weather today, huh? And flock to normie trends, are Ugg boots still a thing? And for the most part, share the same uncritical worldview. <laughs> the classic melancholy meme Wojak, a sad man cruelly drawn in M Microsoft Paint, has now received the NPC treatment with NPC Wojak. <laughs> I didn't know this guy was called Wojak. I just thought he was Feels Guy. Part crackpot social theory and part elementary school insult, the NPC meme originated from a deeply comical medley of bogus physics and stupid religion found on 4chan. Originally posted in 2016, it resurfaced last month. I have a theory that there are only a fixed quantity of souls on planet Earth that cycle continuously through reincarnation. However, since the human growth rate is so severe, the soulless extra walking flesh piles around us are NPCs, or the ultimate normal fags, who autonomously follow groupthink and social trends in order to appear convincingly human. <laughs> oh, God. Listen, I have a feeling that the only reason that you find this insulting and dehumanizing is because you probably have some of the traits that they're describing. <laughs> I mean, there are a few normy things that I like. All right, there there are many no there, there are many um, non normy things that I like, but there's definitely some normy things that I like too. And I don't feel insulted or dehumanized by the NPC meme. I don't feel insulted or dehumanized when someone calls me a fucking thirty two year old boomer. You know. Essentially, some large portion of society, normies, pop culture fanatics, and Trump haters, who speak in cliches, are in fact NPCs with no internality, agency, or capacity for critical thought. I mean, there seems to be some... <laughs> that does seem to be how you guys act, isn't it? I mean, th there are many good reasons to hate Trump. There are many, many, many good reasons to hate Trump. However, whenever I come across a bona fide Trump hater... They never actually present one of them. They just call him a racist, like that's supposed to be something. How to tell when someone is an NPC, wrote anti-SJW alt-right journalist Ian Miles Chong on Twitter. Um, update. Chong returned a request for comment to note that he does not consider himself to be alt-right. Do you want to know why? Because the alt-right are white identitarians, and Ian Miles Chong is Asian. You fucking morons. Okay. This is how I know you're you're an NPC, because you think an Asian man can be alt right. Yeah, this this entire article is basically her shrieking how she's not an NPC, while simultaneously describing all of the NPC characteristics as being part of herself, and saying that that's completely fine. It's. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you're not even the hero of your own story, Cecilia de Anastasio. Additionally, I know the content has again been sparse, guys. I'm I'm very sorry about that. You will hear from me very soon, though, uh, out, outside of SJ Weeklies. I love you guys. Thank you for continuing to support me. I'll see you soon.